And uh, today I'm going to talk about uh, frame rate exclusive sync management in live video uh, streams in collaborative mobile uh, production. First, I will give an overview of the presentation. Since uh, the problem I am uh, going to talk about is uh, specific to a certain scenario in a, in a new um, application area, so I will talk about uh, that application area first and then discuss how new synchronization uh, problems emerges in, in, in that uh, area. And then I will talk about uh, proposed solutions and then uh, some evaluation by simulation and then after that I will talk about previous review before concluding the presentation. So, with the advent of high-speed uh, mobile internet like 3G and 4G, and uh, coupled with uh, high-end mobile devices with streaming capabilities, uh, we could foresee a new uh, application area in Marji, which would allow users to uh, produce live uh, videos uh, collaboratively, just like it is done in the fashion broadcast uh, TV productions. During our research, we, we built two prototypes of such applications. One was mobile vision mixer, and the other one was instant broadcasting systems. It is like, it is like let's say we have four users have, have, having mobile cameras, and uh, a fifth user having another mobile uh, phone which uh, can receive four, four live video streams on his mobile uh, phone, and he can uh, select uh, from four uh, mobile streams uh, in real time, and the final broadcast will be broadcast on the on the web page in, in real time as well. So that's what these systems do. The next on the next slide, I'm going to show you a video uh, of such system systems in, uh, in play. So this is uh, four camera persons who are filming. This is me filming a live stream from the train. And this is my supervisor, Oscar Julie, filming, uh, and then another colleague, Celia. So we are all are sending live streams to Avid's mobile phone, which can show four feeds in real time. And Avid can select uh, whatever angle he, he chooses to uh, broadcast as a final output. In the next slide, I will show the final product of, the, of this uh, process. This was uh, in real time uh, product of the live broadcast process. So Albert is uh, switching from one angle to another in, in, in real time. Now we switch from view from within the train and then he will switch back to the platform and yeah, we got the idea how how was it? So this was the scenario. With, with, the, with the availability of mobile application uh, capable of doing mixing, uh, we have a new scenario where a director who is mixing the video streams uh, it can be uh, present at the event which is being, made, uh, being filmed from different angles. Uh, this is a new scenario. It, is, it was not uh, there before availability of mobile mixing applications. Uh, because earlier, in earlier systems, like in a uh, professional TV production uh, system, the scenario uh, would look like this. The director was always uh, sitting in, a, in four walls in his uh, production room where he cannot see the event himself directly, but he can only see even through his mixing console. While in this scenario where the director is present at the event, he can uh, watch the event directly as well as through his mixing console in, in his uh, mobile phone. So this is the new scenario, and this is a new, new scenario we call it in-view mixing. It presents new challenges, and uh, one of those challenges is delay. Uh, since the director is present at the situation, and since he can see the event and its presentation on his mobile phone, he can notice the delay what's happening actually there and what's being uh, presented on the, on the mobile phone. And here, since we are talking about multiple uh, live feeds, so and also we are relying on internet uh, for delivering the media, 
the delay from each feed uh, could be or is will potentially be different. This will cause asynchrony among the feed, uh, among the streams. While in, um, in, in traditional uh, broadcasting uh, scenario where the system director is not in view of the event, we call it out of view mixing. Here, delay is not a problem since the director cannot uh, notice what's happening actually in the event and what's, what's uh, presented at his mixer control. So delay was not noticeable. And uh, synchronization problem was still there, but they had a uh, solution. For example, they used uh, dedicated media for delivering streams uh, from cameras to mixer mixing room, and the dedicated hardware to make sure that streams are uh, synchronized. But here in mobile uh, scenario, it's not those um, uh, hardware are not available. So we need to solve that uh, problem in that scenario. <coughs> So as I talked, talked earlier, the auto view mixing is the traditional uh, setting where the director sits away from the event and observe, observes the event only through camera feeds in his mixer and so on. In this case, delays are tolerable. And in in-view mixing, there's a new scenario and uh, where the, the event being filmed is directly visible uh, for director. So this kind of uh, scenario is sensitive to delays and synchronization, uh, sorry, asynchrony. So with the availability of uh, uh, mobile application for mixing, uh, some clever guy sitting over there, he came up with new uh, application uh, idea, the switching, the context-based switching. For example, uh, because it's mobile, the director can choose to be at the site of event or he can choose to be away from the event. So it's either in view or out of view. So we could switch, we could uh, switch between two modes of handling synchronization based on two different uh, requirements on different uh, two, two different scenarios. So one 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 scenario was it out of view, which was traditional, and the solutions are out there. And since it's tolerant for delay, so we could use. Uh, let's say buffering based solutions to synchronize the videos because but the but the new uh, scenario which is in view mixing uh, remains to unpack uh, we, it remains to unpack the details of this uh, mixing principles in this uh, in this uh, scenario so what we are here uh, doing is uh, analyze the details of uh, in view mixing scenario make an addition to the design of such systems and then get an early indication of possibility of, to handle uh, the problems by simulation of uh, uh, proposed solution. So, yeah, here in, in, in view mixing, as I have earlier talked as well, that delay, the delay between what the director can see and <coughs> uh, see directly and what's visible in the mixer is visible and it's new and it's Low, low delay is required, as low delay as possible in this scenario. And asynchrony among the multiple camera fields is also required. It's a semi-traditional problem. Uh, it's new uh, in a way that in this scenario, the delays, we, we need to deal with this problem while keeping the delay as low as possible. So we cannot uh, rely on the solutions that, that, that rely on buffering uh, for, for maintaining synchronization, because when we use buffers, we always add some additional delay. So we thought to to yeah to, to solve this situation, what what we can do make the delay between event itself and its presentation on the mixer console as low well as possible and make sure all the streams arrive at the same time with the mixer uh, console without adding uh, additional delay in the process. For that we we thought uh, manipulating with frames. Uh, could be uh, could be a solution to that. Uh, for example, if uh, one stream is delayed, to to handle that, we can adjust the frame rate according to the bandwidth, and then uh, that that uh, delayed stream will be uh, in sync to to the other streams, normal streams. The one drawback of uh, relying on 
frame rate is that uh, we will lose smoothness in the final video and uh, the video will be jumpy when, when the frame rate is dropped. But the same thing we are talking about a certain scenario, which is any game mixing. The director can directly see what's happening. So this drawback can be ignored because since the director is at the event and he can see what's happening in his eyes. And, and why we didn't rely on reducing spatial resolution or uh, bitrate, because we wanted to make sure that each frame's quality is, uh, should be good as, as it is possible. So we, we didn't want to uh, compromise on image quality there. So this is uh, how uh, our solution would look like. You consider there are two uh, video sources, S1 and S2 are sending separate streams to uh, receivers at Mixer Console. And then there is a blog called FASM, which is Frame Rate Explosion <coughs> Synchronization Manager. It reads timestamps from uh, each uh, stream and then uh, tries to uh, synchronize that stream by adjusting its frame rate uh, with, the uh, with the reference clock, which is uh, sitting in the mixer uh, console. And the reference clock is synchronized with all devices using, for example, NTP. And when all the streams are synchronized to one single reference clock, so automatically they are uh, synchronized with each other. This is a flowchart of our algorithm. Uh, it starts with initializing threshold value and then uh, preference clock. Threshold value is the threshold for synchronization offset, like how, how big is the uh, difference, how big is the difference between streams. So, and then it reads timestamp and bandwidth, and then it sees, okay, if, it's, if the bandwidth is recovering, recover the frame rate if it was uh, already, already reduced. And if the bandwidth is not recovering, it checks X sync, which is a, a offset, synchronization offset. It, uh, it calculates that and then checks if that is greater than threshold. And if that is greater than threshold, then it drops the frame rate on the corresponding stream. Uh, and otherwise, it just uh, goes back to the start of the iteration again. So this happens on, this is happened on every three frames, I believe. So we are taking mean value of uh, off synchronization uh, offset uh, of every three frames and then calculate uh, its uh, offset and you know start the iteration based on that. <coughs> to evaluate this uh, algorithm, we we decided to <coughs> take a middle step instead of. Uh, implementing the system uh, because it would, it would take a long time. So we took this middle step uh, by simulating the solution. We simulated two video sources and uh, two video receivers and FASM in the max MSP and uh, network links uh, using IPFW where you can uh, manipulate bandwidth on, on the network links. So this is how our results look like. In, uh, yeah. So there are two streams uh, in bandwidth chart. You can see that there are two streams with, where bandwidth is changing over time. Uh, for example, uh, at point one in bandwidth chart, the yeah, the bandwidth to, to stream one, the bandwidth to stream one uh, drops, and then uh, then uh, the synchronization offset at X sync chart becomes higher than threshold and our algorithm reacts to that and drops the frame rate of the corresponding stream and as a result the synchronization offset again is below the threshold value. So that's how it goes on. So what we what are the results and what we got from our research? Um, one result is that FASM is capable of, uh, of handling increased synchronization without adding additional delay. If we are not adding additional delay to understand the synchronization, we are solving one problem, which is of course delay. And then, since it's about synchronization, we are handling the second problem as well. 
But during this, uh, we we figured uh, we we discovered that the synchronization recovery time is also very important for the for the performance of the actor uh, who is mixing. For example, if it takes a long time to recover the synchronization when when it deteriorates on one of the streams, it will still affect his uh, performance. And this uh, uh, parameter depends on step value, like how, what what value by what value do you reduce the frame rate to handle the synchronization, and then other par parameters of, like severity of asynchrony and iteration size. So in related work, we were mostly interested in uh, interstream synchronization uh, techniques. We found lots of uh, lots of work related to that. And uh, there are many combination of uh, techniques, uh, but we couldn't find a technique uh, which was not using any kind of buffering. So uh, all the techniques were using some combination of buffering techniques within that. So we came up with uh, a new combination of, from existing technique. We took, or took our our inspiration from existing techniques, and then we came up with with a frame rate exclusive uh, idea. Yeah, so, in conclusion, mobile technology allows amateurs to work with professional standards, but also uh, new forms of collaborative library production scenarios. And those scenarios present new kind of challenges. And one of those challenges is synchronization and delays in the mixing. And FASM is capable of achieving increased synchronization uh, among multiple streams. And, and then, during our research, we unpacked other parameters with implication on mixer's uh, performance or experience, like synchronization recovery time and stuff like that. Thank you very much. If you have, if you're covering the same area, it becomes obvious that you really want that. But if the views that you are switching between are completely disjoint, how relevant does this syncing? I mean, the, you want to have the smooth flow, so the per frame syncing is of course important. But the longer term sync, do you really need to have the frames that are actually kept at the same time uh, for the user experience? You mean? I'm not sure I uh, got your question clearly, actually. Right. I wonder. Um, you want to have a synchronized view for the director and the synchronized output. Yeah. But do you actually need, if the views are completely disjoint and you have no reference, and the view has no reference objects, mm -hmm. do you really need a frame ah. accurate sync? Or can you have a frame, a shift by several frames without any causing any harm? It depends, yeah, if we need to actually see the actual uh, user study on that to answer correctly that, that uh, on, on question. But yes, if, uh, for example, if uh, camera angles are not focused on single reference uh, event, then it's not uh, easy or it's not uh, noticeable to mix it. So it might be not a problem in that uh, situation. But here, here we are actually specifically focusing on the situation where you are filming the same same event from different angles, so that's why it's a problem here, so that's what we are trying to solve. But the situation can change, right, dynamically? Yeah, yeah. And that's what Yeah, for, for example, if it, if it changes, even then we are in, if we, we are in sync, yeah. that's what we want, sure, all yes. the time. So I, I understand that you choose now to reduce the frame rate, but do you think in different events or different contexts it's, it would be maybe better to whatever lower resolution or, or reduce values in another way? In frames? It might be usable in different in different contexts, I would say. But with this application uh, context, which we are talking about, I think it's uh, important for a director to exactly see what's happening. And for that, it's very important for that for that to know the you know to 
get the information from the frame itself. For example, he, if he wants to switch from uh, an overview shot to a detail shot or vice versa, he needs to know exactly what's happening. If ball is, uh, let's say if it's, if it's a game, uh, football, if ball is crossing the line or not, he needs to know. And he needs to, uh, you know, make his decision based on that information. So I, I think it's more important the quality here than the Alright, let's thank the speaker.